Good morning, everybody. How's everybody this morning? I don't know about anybody else, but I'm still cold. <laughs> but that's what it is. That's what it is, right? Ah. Are you feeling good today? I think I am. Hope the Lord gives us a good day. Fine day. What do we got here? Oh, look at this. They're running cables. Fiber optic, probably. Right up to the house. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. How you been? Y'all have to excuse my talking to traffic and turning because I'm still in town. I popped y'all on right as I left the house this morning. Oh. I want to talk this morning about good works. I've been told I didn't believe in them. I do believe in them. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I believe in good works. You do, too. I hope you do, anyway. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Morning. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> good afternoon. Yes, good words. And the scripture that I have in mind is found in the book of Ephesians. And you know what? Looked at it before I got in the car here. I can't remember what it said. Isn't that awful? That is awful. Ephesians chapter 2. I just so happen to have a New Testament in here. In fact, I got two because I'm going to read it out of the other one as well. Oh, more construction. For we are his workmanship. Whose workmanship? God's. Look here. Back up to nine. No. Back up to eight. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any should boast. Now that right there cuts out good works. It's something we do to get saved, doesn't it? Well, what are you talking about? Well, it cuts out any kind of work. By grace you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It's a gift to God, not of works. Good works, bad works, indifferent works. <laughs> I think I mentioned this one time. That old conditionalist the apostle, Claude Casey, C.H. Casey, debating an absoluter one time. And the absoluter made the mistake of letting Claude uh, define the proposition. And Claude's definition, and Claude's prep. Claude's proposition for debate was that God predestinated all things good, bad, or indifferent. Morning. 
good, bad, or indifferent. Then he beat that absolute to death over what indifferent was. How could God be indifferent to anything? Never let your opponent define your terms for you. <laughs> but anyway, no, it don't matter what kind of work it is. None of the works. Why? Because if it's a work, you'd boast. Now, brethren, let me ask you a question. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did Paul say, by grace are you saved eternally? No, he did not. And then to think they're rightly dividing the word of truth by throwing that word eternal in there, make a grave mistake because Paul's talking about the entire process of salvation from first to last. It's not a works. Remember what he wrote in the book of Romans, I believe it's in the ninth chapter, where he talked about Jacob and Esau. And he said, before the children were born, had not done any good nor evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand not of works, but of him that calleth, all the way to the end, where it's granted to the bride to be clothed in fine linen, clean and white, for fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And that righteousness, as we spoke of earlier, must be the righteousness wrought out by Jesus Christ and him alone, because none of this is by works. I don't care whether it's time or eternity. Salvation's not a works period. And he goes on to talk a little more. And he says, for we are his workmanship. Well, by golly, did you realize that you were God's workmanship? We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Now when did that creation take place? I will submit to you before the foundation of the world. We were created in Christ. And that was not a works, was it? That was also not of any kind of works. Now, if you were created in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world, which I believe it would have to be, listen, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God, listen now, has before ordained that we should walk in them. What are we getting ready to talk about? We're getting ready to talk about foreordination. We're getting ready to talk about the predestination of God. The ordination that he set forth before the foundation of the world. And he has ordained God's people unto good works. That they're going to walk in. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Let me ask you this question. Do you believe that preaching in Jesus' name is a good work? Do you believe that casting out devils in the name of Jesus is a good work? Do you not believe seeing the sick healed would be a good work? All done in the name of Jesus. None of them are. 
in and of themselves, none of them are good works. How do you know? Why would you say such a thing? Don't you think that a man speaking in the name of Jesus Christ is doing a good work? Don't you think that a man casting out devils in the name of Jesus is a good work? Don't you think that uh, we ought to be getting rid of them uh, sorry demons? Listen. When those stood before the king and said, We have done these wonderful works, Jesus said, I never knew ye depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What am I getting at? What you and I perceive as a good work, and I'm going to say this because I'm charitable. What you and I perceive with our natural eyes as a good work, 90% of the time, it isn't. It's not a good work. It's a work of the flesh. Even though it might be done in the name of Jesus. I can't help when I when when I think about that to think of the seven sons of Sceva, the Jewish exorcists who saw Paul healing the sick, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, and they said, "Man, I tell you what, if well, they get a hold of this old boy that's possessed of a demon, and they said." In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out of him. Demon responded to him, didn't he? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? <laughs> he beat him so bad they bled out naked. They run out of the place. He beat their robes off them. You know, there's symbolism there. He showed them it's not possessing the righteousness of Christ, not being covered. If they weren't just wandering exorcists, they were wandering stars. Read and Jew, see if that comes about. That what they gloried in was their shame in reality. Good works aren't good because another man thinks they're good. Remember what the law said? It must be perfect to be accepted. It must be perfect. I will submit that neither you nor me nor anyone else in their flesh and by the movings of their flesh can do a good work ever. That the only good works are the works which God has ordained as good and which he gives his children to walk in. Remember one thing. Paul is great in his contrast when he, in the book of Galatians, talks about the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. He never talks about the works of the Spirit. This is one of the few times he talks about good works. God's prepared them for his children. He's ordained them. And they're going to walk in them. And notice that. 
they're going to walk in what God has prepared. The only work that the saints of God do that can be counted as good is that which God has ordained before the foundation of the world for them to walk in. And I will submit to you that they are the works of Christ, whose work was accepted by God because it was acceptable because it was perfect. If the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us, is it hard to believe that his righteous works are not imputed to us as well, that they're not imparted to us, that they are not given for us, to us? People don't want that. They don't. They don't want that. There's only a few old hard shells want that. <laughs> I believe that. That there's only a few old hard shells want that, that doctrine. Everybody else wants to go out and do and do and do some more. They want to make sure they're doing. They've got their duty to do. And I fear for them who are trying to do their duty. Because the best they're going to be is unprofitable servants. Not going to be sons. They're going to be servants still. And not good ones, but unprofitable ones. Why? Because they think that their works are good enough to earn them something. Now, some of them smarter than others. After the flesh, they're smarter than others. What do you mean? Well, I'll tell you what I mean. They say, well, we know our works are imperfect, so Jesus is going to add to them his blessing so that they'll be accepted. I never heard of Jesus adding to anything. God's going to say, well, it's all right. Others will, will say this. Or God will say, oh, it's all right. They're my children. I know it's imperfect, but, but I'll take their second best anyway. Jesus, come here and make up the difference. You know what? Now, y'all might think I'm being a little too uh, hard on them here. But I would just as soon have someone say that there's a balance scale in heaven. And God's going to put your good works on one side and your bad works on the other. And if you believed in Jesus, if you raised your hand, if you prayed the sinner's prayer, walked down to the front and gave that pastor your hand, went through the waters of baptism, I mean, you've done everything you're supposed to do to keep your duty clean. Jesus is going to add to your good side and make it to where you get in. I would just as soon believe that as I would that God will accept your rotten works if Jesus just polishes them up a little bit. Or he'll take second best. He'll take less than perfect. Oh, can him that is all perfection accept that which is imperfect? That's why under the law, there are none righteous. No, not one. 
because you can't keep it. You're a lawbreaker, and so am I. We need righteousness, and we can't get it by our own striving, by our own doing, by our own thoughts, or by our own actions. It must be given to us. It must be given to us. So I find there's nothing good that I can do, which makes my duty so unclean. If I try to do my duty, it's unclean. Therefore, it's unacceptable. So why do we think it's good? Because we look at the outward appearance and it looks good. Looks good to the flesh. Looks good to the eyes. We can say, my goodness, he must be bound for heaven. Died with a smile on his face. No, he gave every beggar that ever come to him a quarter. Doesn't matter that he had a hundred dollars, hundred dollar bills in his pocket where he could relieve the suffering of those. No, he made a fair show in the flesh with his quarters. Oh, but he was such a good man. No, he wasn't. He was rotten. They do their works to be seen of men and to be bragged on. And yet we still want to call them good. Lord, deliver me. Go see where I am, right? The only work that God's children can do that's good is the good works that God has ordained for them. He predestinated them. And they'll walk in them. Every one of them. Notice that. They're not going to do them. That's the important thing in this verse. They are not going to do these works. They're going to walk in them. You think about that. And you think about how and how that contrasts with what the worldly religion called Christianity thinks about good works. You've got to get sanctified. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. God will accept it. God tells you to do it and if you'll just use the means it'll be all right and you'll grow and you'll be this that and the other no you walk in what god has ordained for you now i'm gonna say something here (laughs) Some people ain't going to like it, and I don't care. You can't help it. If God has ordained you to walk in these works, you can't help but do it. And that's the glorious part of it, because you wouldn't as well as couldn't if you were left to your own devices. It takes the power of God to bring you into this. It takes the power of God to keep you in it. It takes the power of God 
so that you can go through it in the works that are good because he ordained them good to you, for you, and you're walking in them. Oh, it don't seem like I am. You ain't a fit judge. You're not a fit judge. Really? And I'm not either. Oh, I can form an opinion. But Lord only knows whether it's right or not. Lord only knows. Because it's he who declares things good. It's he who declares things not good. But I'll go this far. If God hasn't ordained them as good, they aren't good. He's ordained them as bad. And we need to consider He hath perform he performeth, Job said. What? He performs? Yes, he performs the thing appointed for me. God does. You think you just decide to do it? That's your perception. But God is performing all this in you. To you. For you. He performeth the thing that's appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore, when I consider, I'm afraid of it. I know my heart somewhat. And I have to wonder has God appointed me? glory or for wrath I have a hope that hope is Jesus Christ nowhere else do I expect to find a good work except in him and given by him to his children I walk in them because God ordained me to, not because I whipped up enough strength and decided to be good today. Well, brethren, that's what I got. If you never considered this before, I hope the Lord would bless you too. If you think I'm wrong, I hope you correct me in love. Don't not write me off as just some other old land and know me in heretic. I'm glad I'm an antinomian. I don't want to be a heretic around God's children. But I am going to be a heretic. Well, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. I hope the Lord blesses you with a good day in Christ.